This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to sign up using the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Less than a month ago, Italians went to the polls to elect a new government after Mario Draghi's unity coalition collapsed in July. These elections were won overwhelmingly by the right-wing coalition, led by Giorgia Maloney's Fratelli d'Italia, and supported by Matteo Salvini's Liga, Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia, and a fourth smaller party called Us Moderates. Despite an overwhelming numerical victory, there were always questions about the ideological cohesion of the bloc, especially over public spending and Ukraine. In a sequence of events that has been chaotic even by the high standards of Italian politics, less than a month after their election, it looks like the coalition is about to collapse, after audio recordings of Silvio Berlusconi bragging about his personal friendship with Putin were linked to the media, forcing Maloney to make a strongly worded statement on Wednesday evening declaring that Italy is a full and proud member of Europe and the Atlantic Alliance. Anyone who disagrees with this cornerstone cannot be part of the government, even if this means not forming the government. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the most recent developments, what they mean for Italy and what they might mean for Ukraine. So before we get into what Berlusconi actually said, which by the way is pretty incredible, let's start with a bit of context. As we explained in our video on the Italian election back in September, roughly three-eighths of all seats are elected by first-past-the-post in a single-member constituency, with the remaining five-eighths elected by proportional representation at the regional level. In the first-past-the-post races, multiple parties can run as a single coalition in order to maximise their chances of winning. Because the right-wing successfully negotiated a coalition, and the left-wing didn't, Italy's right-wing coalition did particularly well at this year's elections, winning the vast majority of first-past-the-post constituencies. By far and away, the largest party in the right-wing coalition was Giorgia Maloney's Fratella d'Italia, otherwise known as the FDI, who won about 26% of the popular vote. Their main coalition partners, Liga and Forza Italia, both won about 8% of the vote. Now, while these parties are all on the right of Italian politics, they've always had significant policy disagreements. For example, Maloney is an old-school fiscal conservative, with an emphasis on balancing the budget, while Salvini is more of a populist, with a keen affinity for higher public spending. Similarly, while Maloney has previously expressed some sympathy towards Putin, she celebrated his 2018 election victory as representing the unambiguous will of the Russian people, she's taken a conspicuously hawkish stance on Ukraine. Maloney is strongly in favour of arms shipments to Ukraine, and has described Putin's invasion as an unacceptable act of war. Her coalition partners, on the other hand, were never quite as keen. Both were once vocal supporters for Putin, but have admittedly distanced themselves from him since the invasion began, at least publicly. Salvini used to be an open admirer of the Russian president, and has recently called for the West to rethink its sanctions regime, which he claims is hurting Italian business. Berlusconi is even closer to Putin. The two have been close friends since Berlusconi's second stint as Prime Minister, which began in 2001. And when we say close friends, we don't just mean political allies. Berlusconi and Putin are genuinely very good mates. They've been on holiday together multiple times, and Putin apparently even had a duvet with both of their faces on it. Yeah, you heard that right. In 2008, Berlusconi allegedly gave Putin a duvet featuring a life-size image of the two men, because that's a normal thing to do. In 2015, Ukraine banned Berlusconi for three years for visiting Crimea, illegally annexed by Russia, with Putin. And there were even reports at the time that Putin wanted Berlusconi to become Russia's economy minister. This two-decade-long friendship has produced some great photo opportunities. So great, in fact, that we're just going to show you a quick montage, just to give you a sense of how close they are.
Anyway, as you'd expect, Berlusconi was particularly reluctant to criticise Putin over Ukraine, despite the fact that Draghi's coalition, of which Berlusconi's Forza Italia was part, were pro-Ukraine. Berlusconi was silent for the first two months, before finally saying in April that he was disappointed and saddened by Putin's actions. In May, however, Berlusconi came out against weapon shipments to Ukraine and said that Europe should try to get the Ukrainians to accept Putin's demands. Nonetheless, as the junior parties in the coalition, both Salvini and Berlusconi agreed to toe Maloney's line on Ukraine. This was always going to be difficult, given Berlusconi's lack of discretion. Just two days before the election, for example, Berlusconi claimed that Putin was, quote, pushed into the war, and that Russia only wanted to replace Zelensky's administration with, quote, decent people. However, things got worse this week when Italian news agency La Presse published leaked audio from a meeting between Berlusconi and his MPs, where Berlusconi bragged that him and Putin were sending each other, quote, lovely letters, and that in one of these letters, Putin had described Berlusconi as number one amongst his five best friends. In the recordings, Berlusconi also claims that Putin sent him 20 bottles of vodka for his birthday, to which he responded by sending Putin a bottle of Lambruscio wine. On top of this, Berlusconi implied that he disagreed with Maloney's position on the war, saying that Putin is actually, quote, a man of peace, and that Zelensky forced him into the war by violating the Minsk Accords. Ironically, Berlusconi goes on to say that he can't personally give his opinion because if it's leaked to the press, it will turn out to be a disaster. Which is, well, exactly what happened. This hasn't gone down well with Maloney, who released a strongly worded statement on Wednesday evening, declaring that Italy is a full and proud member of Europe and the Atlantic Alliance. Anyone who disagrees with this cornerstone cannot be part of the government, even if this means not forming the government. Clearly, it now looks like a right-wing coalition between Maloney's FDI and Berlusconi's Forza Italia isn't going to happen. Or, at the very least, Maloney looks unlikely to give Forza Italia the foreign ministry, which was what the coalition had originally agreed. There is already signs that Maloney is planning to jump ship. She lent some of her senators to us moderates, the smallest coalition partner we mentioned at the beginning, to form a new parliamentary group, which requires a minimum of six senators. It's not clear why Maloney would do this unless she's planning to leave Berlusconi's bloc. All in all, it looks like the Italian government is on track to collapse before it's even begun. Ultimately, Maloney learned to her own peril that she really couldn't handle making the big decisions at such a complex time politically and economically. It would have been great if she'd just brushed up with Brilliant, the STEM learning platform where you can learn everything from quantum computing or algebra to logical decision making a skill severely lacking at the moment. Their logical thinking course might start simple, but it builds teaching you logical reasoning skills until you're solving problems which previously looked impossible. You'll get used to that empowering feeling of learning too, because this isn't just about memorization and lectures. Brilliant teaches you by doing, using active learning techniques to teach you the principles behind otherwise complex subjects and ensuring you actually understand what's going on. Using this teaching methodology, you can learn about all kinds of STEM topics. That's algebra, applied probability, calculus, gravitational physics, and even cryptocurrency. In fact, they even have a new course from Kurtzgesagt, which I've got to say I found very personally exciting and spent a lot of time playing with. Anyway, if you want to learn in a more fun way, then you should sign up to Brilliant, and the link in the description will get you 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is not only a great deal, but supports the channel. So, thanks.